it is time for us to do buying and selling. We're going to start off with Damian Lewis. Great rookie season. Really promising rookie out of LSU, but he's going from right guard to left guard this year. He was asked about that transition. Here's his answer. It was balanced. You know, at first, I was training in the offseason at right guard. You know, never played left guard. So uh, I just came here, you know, just flipping it in my mind, you know, found balance. So now, overall, I feel great. You know, I feel like I play either position, center, right guard, left guard. So, you know, it's just a balance now. Are you buying it? Is this is, is switching from the right to the left side something he's never done going to not be a big deal? Well, this is one of those things where I would generally defer to our uh, offensive lineman cognoscenti Ray Roberts. But, yeah, I, I, I do buy that switching from one side to the other could be an issue. We know it's definitely an issue at tackle. I can imagine moving from right guard where you were your rookie year to left guard can have a bit of an adjustment period. And I think he can actually take care of it, but there's certainly going to be, I would imagine, some growing pains as he feels out just being on that side of the offensive line and also having a different center in Kyle Fuller, potentially in between he and Gabe Jackson. Yeah, I think this, this could be a challenge. I think, I think Damian Lewis is good, though. I, like I, th- I, think ultimate, I think ultimately it comes down to the quality of the player more than the challenge of the position switch. I, and and I, I, think, I think Damian Lewis is going to do just fine. He's still got a fat dude on either side of him. He's, he's, he, doesn't have to, he doesn't have to feel that uncomfortable about what, what he's doing. It's not, it's not a tackle. The tackle, because of the drop step you have to use, because you're, it's, it's entirely different. I would assume that it's a little more, it's a little tougher because the tackle has one open side. He has one open side where he has no help or usually won't have help or has to be prepared to not have help around the outside. And the guard, the guard, you still, you're still flanked by fatties on either side. You should, you, it should give you some company. All right, we settled that one. Now Robert Kimdiche, who joined uh, Wyman and Bob yesterday, really engaging interview. He's been banged up at times in training camp. Here is a former first-round pick. Alden Smith did not stick. Is, is Kim Diche going to? He, he was asked about making the most of this second chance after his, his first tenure in the NFL with, with the Arizona Cardinals, who drafted him in the first round, did not pan out. Over time, you know, having a focus and, 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 and buy into who, what, the kind of player I wanted to be when I got here and, and kind of refocus in my, my, uh, my, my vision of me, you know what I mean? And, 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 and I, wanna ch- I wanted to change the narrative. And so, uh, you know, it's been it's been everything I wanted it to be. It's been exciting. It's been uh, it's been it's been uh, humbling. It's been a constant, you know, just this, this form of evolution for me. And so, I'm just happy about that, and happy to be in this position and have this headspace and this opportunities. I'm rooting for him. Mm-hmm. I like that he said along the way there. It's been humbling. Yep. But I'm gonna sell this. Okay. So so. We haven't seen it from him yet in in the yeah. NFL, and I, while I would love to, I mean that's a really competitive group right now on the defensive line, and I don't think there's anyone that you look at and you say, oh, this guy's the odd man out, because Rasheem Green maybe he would have been that guy, but he's having a really good preseason in training camp. Benson Mayo is going to make this team. Kerry Hyder is going to make this team. Alton Robinson is going to make this team. You keep on going down the list. Brian Monet played well for you last year. Puna Ford played well for you last year. Where does he fit in, and who can he actually supplant? I don't know who. If they don't bring in Geno Atkins, does he make it? He's got a better chance, but I, I feel like that's something the Seahawks would likely want to do at the end of training camp. Seattle has offered guys second chances. An, another opportunity at, at sort of an NFL career. Sometimes it's really worked out. Mike Williams, at least in 2010, that first year, it went fantastic. You could you could throw Marshawn Lynch in the same category because Buffalo was moving on from him. But I think people around the league still, I, I, I think people around the league would have believed in Marshawn. If Marshawn was available, uh, the, the ability to, people would have, were coveting him. Like that wasn't, that wasn't somebody who everybody was like, yeah, pass. Um, like, like Kim Diche. Unfortunately, he hasn't been on the, like, we haven't seen it. So he's a guy to watch. He's going to have to do something on Saturday night. And I'm not even sure if he's going to play, but he's going to have to do something to, to show them that he needs to, that, that he's ready to make an impact. Do you think one preseason game can, can earn a guy a roster spot in today's NFL? At this position? Yeah. Cause where's your depth at defensive tackle? 
You got Puna Ford. There ain't much. Right? Kerry Hyder's going to play some there. Brian Monet is probably your starter right now. But he could... Like, that's that's not a spot and because Alden Smith is not here, and while Alden Smith was playing more edge, I, 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 think there's, I think there's a chance for him because of that. Look, they're looking at Geno Atkins, so they're looking for someone to fill that defensive tackle role. The next one, we're going to move a little bit to the front of the depth chart, and a guy that we haven't seen so far this preseason, but someone who got a new contract in the offseason, is Puna Ford. Here's his teammate, Benson Mayoa, talking about Puna. Man, I... To be honest, when I seen him, I'm like, damn, this mother playing the nose, but man, that dude is, is you, you guys see him. You see something else. He's special. Um, comes out here and works every day, you know, in the game, you know, you know what you are gonna get from him. Um, and, and Puna's 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 a great, great player. And he's only getting better. Is Puna Puna Ford a special player? He's a starter. He's a really good starter. Is he a special player? We've heard this before, haven't we? Mm-hmm. My hope is yes. If I've heard it Are you before, buying it? If I've, if I've heard it before, what's a special player? Isn't special player like Chris Jones level, you know? No. Well, no. Chris, Chris Jones is a franchise tag player. A guy that could get Pro Bowl consideration. A guy that's going to be a starter here for five or six more years. To me, that's a special player defensive tackle. If Jared Reed can get 10-plus sacks in a the season, then I, I feel like... A lot of defensive tackles could potentially. So I, I, I think he has the potential to be that. I guess I'm not going to go so far as to say, yes, he is. I, I, I want to see it happen. But I can buy into the idea of him eventually being one. There's no layaway option. Paul. Then I'm selling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying it. I'm buying it. I think Puna Ford's going to be – I think he is going to be the guy that we talk about making. He and Jordan Brooks, I think, will notice Brooks more because of the tackles this year. He plays that playmaker spot, but I think Puna Ford is going to be someone that we're talking about as one of their best defensive linemen at the end of the season.